My great grandfather came to Tomogamy in 1913. The famous Gooderum family. They paddled up the Tomogamy River into Lake Tomogamy, and uh, he said, "I'm someday I'm going to start a camp here, Camp Tomogamy." Talk to me a little bit about this show you have at 176 at the Nova Gallery. The hallways are beautiful right now. So the show is up until September, I believe, the sixth of September. It's been on my project list for about four years. I live surrounded by water, and you know I've gone to Vancouver Island many times, and I go to Vancouver Island and go. This is just like tomogamy. And it really inspired me. I thought, you know, um, I want to try to capture this in a little bit different way. So just spending some time in the bush, uh, I developed an idea. I do my own editing, I print my own prints, and I frame it myself. But I thought, for this show, I'd like to try something a little bit different. So I put some of them on canvas, and uh, I like the way they look. Good I think they're beautiful, yeah. yeah. Welcome everybody to Richard Forte Presents. I am excited to be in Sweet 16 Studio here in North Bay with my friend. And I'm an admirer of his photos. He's got an art show at 176 in North Bay up right now. His name is Jerry Gooderum. And if you don't know of him, well, you do now. Because uh, Jerry's kind of a guy who's been around and doing this for a little while in the North. Indeed. So tell me, Jerry... How'd you get started in photography? In high school, I took photography and I had to do darkroom and I had to use film. Actual film. Film. And uh, I took it through high school. And after high school, I got out of it. It didn't have a darkroom and just, you know, just didn't have the camera and the stuff. So I kind of let it go. And then I was going to go to Europe when I was 19 and I bought myself a camera and I went traveling through Europe for a year and it took a lot of great photos all with film and I got most of them but I lost my camera when I was there so when I came back I worked for a little while and uh, then I moved north I was in Oakville originally and uh, I was working and I thought you know I'm in a great place I'd like to pick up photography again so I looked at Canandor and they had these great night courses and actually great week workshops. So I decided to get back into it again and you know, refresh. And so I took uh, courses with uh, James Forsyth and he was doing darkroom. So I thought, perfect, I'll get right back into darkroom. So that's what we did. And after that, he mentored a few of us with digital cameras and um, never looked back. I took, uh, I took a few um, Photoshop courses as well to try to get the editing part because now we're not in the dark room anymore. Yeah. And I, once I started playing with digital, I said, I'm not going back. Yeah. I still have a film camera and I still have film in my freezer, but yeah, I'm not going back. But digital is not all the same. You were talking to me before we started rolling about mirrorless or mm -hmm. actual moving components in your cameras. So you just bought a new camera. You're yes. an icon guy. Yes. Why is it that you don't want the mirrorless or the latest? I guess mirrorless would be the most latest. Mirrorless camera. is the state of the art at the time right now. Um, one of the main reasons is the lenses that I have, I love them. Mm. Every one of them uh, are unique for the, what I picked them for. And they, some of them are actually lenses from my film camera. And they work on my present day Nikon. The problem when you move to mirrorless, you have to get an adapter. Most of the adapters don't work with all the lenses. So now you're messing around with other components. Um, the I believe, unless I'm going into the state-of-the-art top professional mirrorless camera, it's not gonna be as rugged as mine. Mm -hmm. My camera can weather storms, and I'm pretty hard on cameras. I walk through the bush, and uh, you know I don't, I don't carry backpacks, I carry my camera, and I yeah. then a lens. And <clears throat> under those situations, a lot of the times, I'm in pretty rough terrain. And yeah. that camera holds up. The last one I got, I still have it, is my backup camera, my A10. Still works great, but it's pretty rough looking. Yeah. But it's still, there's nothing wrong with it. All the components work of it. So that being said, um, I'm sure that the mirrorless camera would be great. The two things are that I'm hesitant about is the durability. And the second thing is my changing the lenses. And I know there's probably some great lenses out there, but I just, I, I'm old school. I really like the lenses the way they work. I know how to use them. And, and that's, you know, that's kind of what I go with. Yeah, so, those are the tools you work to yeah, work yeah, with yeah. to make your art. You got that hammer and it's 
you know how you to know use it how to and use you it. keep it. That's right. And it's not the hammer. Some people think by getting the camera, they're going to become a great photographer. Is that the case, Jerry? Sometimes it improves your work. Yeah. Um, one thing I moved into, besides going to the, the D850, uh, which is a great camera, is I bought and upgraded my phone a couple times. And when I did, I thought, I'm going to buy a phone for the camera, not yeah. for the phone. So I did a lot of research, and I ended up with a Samsung. Yeah. This is the S22 uh, Ultra. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than I'd want, but the images are phenomenal that come out of this, and I'm really impressed with it. And yeah. I've worked, I generally now I'll take this with me as well as my regular camera, and I'll do some slideshows and different setups with this camera. And it does, I, I've done video with this as well, so. So I'm not completely uh, Neanderthal in terms of the yeah, art. Yeah, you're, you're keeping up. <laughs> Yeah, yes. you're keeping up, but you also have things that you like that you keep. Yes, that's great. Talk to me a little bit about this show you have at 176 at the Nova Gallery. The hallways are beautiful right now. Thank you. Thank filled you. with um, photography that you've taken and you've put on canvas. Many of them you've put on canvas, mm -hmm. framed. Mm -hmm. If anybody hasn't seen it yet, please come by. Talk to us about how long the show's up and what your objective was with this. So the show's up until September, uh, I think, I believe the 6th of September. Uh, and Dermot, a great friend, he, uh, he inspired me to put it together to come here. It's been on my project list for about four years. And two years into it, I started really developing it. So I live surrounded by water, surrounded by nat nature. Um, and, you know, I've gone to Vancouver Island many times. And I go to Vancouver Island and go, this is just like tomogamy. The trees are much bigger. But uh, the I, essence, the feel of it, the it's nature. The same. It's the same. And uh, so I've been to lots of old growth forests in tomogamy and tomogamy area. And it really inspired me. I thought, you know, um, I want to try to capture this in a little bit different way. Not just, you know, there's a big tree. And uh, so just spending some time in the bush, uh, I developed an idea. So it, I had originally had different visions for it. It would have been a very large uh, collaboration with First Nations, with women, with youth. And I went for a couple of grants for that. Uh, I'm not, unfortunately, a grant writer. Uh, I wasn't successful in achieving it. And uh, although I still wanted to pursue it. So I just, I just pursued it on my own. Yeah. Um, I'd still love to coordinate it. And actually part of it I did. Uh, I went up to Ababaga Lake to visit Alex Mathias. And we went through some old growth. I brought a, one of the youths from Bear Island with me. And he did some video. So we did get a component of that. Uh, it's just that I, I paid for it all in my, my own pocket. And to do that whole scale would have been quite expensive. Because right. I really had a large vision of this drones and mm -hmm. a high-end production. Um, I'm happy the way it turned out. Yeah. And I'm glad that Dermot was able to f fit some space for me. And um, yeah, I I am a traditional, I'll print my own, I, I do my own editing, I print my own prints, and I frame it myself. But I thought for this show, I'd like to try something a little bit different. So I put some of them on canvas and uh, I like the way they look. I thought it was a, it was a good I show. I think they're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank they're you. really nice. Thank you. It really uplifts the energy in the, in the hallways here good. to have that beautiful artwork. And of course... North Bay isn't the exact same topography and environment as Tomogamy, but uh, you can see it. I mean, I'm a big fan of Tomogamy. I love it there. I think you live on the most beautiful lake there is. It's I incredible. would not dispute that. And how long have you been in Tomogamy? So um, my great-grandfather came to Tomogamy in 1913. The famous what? Gooderham family. Indeed. Of Toronto. His, of Toronto. And he came with his professor of University of Toronto. They paddled up the Tomogamy River into Lake Tomogamy. And uh, he said, "I'm someday I'm going to start a camp here. And uh, so he started up Cochrane's Camp, which was the boys' camp, traditional boys' camp, Camp Tomogamy. And uh, my father, came, grandfather came up a couple of years later, saw the camp and said, I love it. I love this idea. I'm going to look for a place as well. And he bought a Proper, didn't buy it, leased it uh, across from that camp, uh, four miles across, and it's called Camp Chimo. So it was a fishing lodge, family fishing lodge. And uh, so my father grew up there. And when my father took over the camp, we would come up every summer. So from the day I was born, uh, all until I went to school, we would come up in May and stay till November. 
And then once we went to school, we had the shorter season. So um, that was that was quite uh, quite a, you know an influence on my life. I lived in Oakville and I lived different places and I worked at different jobs. And in 1977, I just got fed up with the traffic, with everything. And although I still would go to Tomogamy, I just said, there's got to be a better life. So I, uh, my father was selling the camp. I said, this may be an opportunity. I came up and introduced myself to the new owner. And I said, hey, do you need a handyman? And he said, I do. So he hired me on the spot. So I spent two years there working at the camp. He never opened it, but he wanted to keep it up. And in the process of doing that, I met another fellow who was in construction, hired me. And uh, so I worked in construction with him for a few years. And then I went on my own, ran my own construction business for 35 years on Lake Tomogamy, living there. Yeah. Bought a house, bought property, uh, met my present wife at the, what was then called the Manitou, which is the, was the bar, local bar. She was a waitress. <laughs> So, uh, and, and, and then that's the story. I had two kids, I raised them on the lake. We had a house in the village. And um, so the kids could go to school, have a real life. Just yeah. like yeah. They, after school, they could bicycle around, visit yeah. their friends. But during the weekends, they came back out on the lake. And then, and my son worked me for, for years as well. So, how so that's the story. Yeah, yeah. How has tomogamy changed um, in that time? It, or has it? it? It's changed since when my grandfather came yes. here. They had the boat line steamboats, which used to bring people from Tomogamy all the way up the lake uh, to different camps and to your own cottage if you wanted to come in that way. People had launches and little boats, but most of the time, the boat livery in Tomogamy, that's how you got here. You, there was The train would bring you here. You'd get on that boat. You'd go to one of the hotels. You would spend your ho- holiday. You'd go home or you had a cottage. And all the land then, it was leased. So people um, leased all kinds of little islands. It was only lake access, no road access. So interesting. Yeah, and and that that changed in the 50s and 60s. The mine, Copperfield Mine, that was here, it closed, and their access road that they used to transport all their ore opened up to the public. And that changed everything. That changed the boat lines. They weren't as popular anymore that changed how people or could arrive on Lake Tomogamy. And, uh, but since that day, it hasn't changed a lot. There's still no mainland development. There was the land caution. There is the, the, uh, the, uh, the First Nations claim to the land has mostly been settled, but that hasn't really changed a lot of how Tomogamy looks today. And mm-hmm. uh, it's still quite a remote lake. It still astounds me that in the middle of the summer, I can sit on my dock and I may see one or two boats going by. And yeah. it's a large lake. Yeah. And if you go to the access road, the cars are parked on both sides of the road from, I don't know if you know what Boatline yeah, Bay is, from Boatline Bay all the way in. That just indicates, and they're all boat trailers. Yeah. And that lake is still, to me, yeah. it, doesn't have, it hasn't changed in yeah, that regard. there's still you know? space. You can still yeah. come up here, not that far from Toronto. Yes. And really feel far yes. from the city. Yes, indeed. And I mean, it is remote. You have to get in a boat yeah. to go to your cottage yeah. or to go to camping if that's what you choose. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's... It's, it's changed a bit land-wise that people are putting more money into their cottages. Yeah. You know, the original cottages were camps. Yeah. People had a dining hall and they had a, a sleeping cabin, sleeping cabin, sleeping cabin. They might have one central cabin where everybody went. Now it's fairly nice buildings yeah. that people yeah, are putting There's beautiful out. places. Yeah, there are. Yeah. How has being in that environment informed your art practice? Because you're you're create you're obviously the subject. Looking by the show you have here, is so informed uh, by the landscape, by the trees, by the nature there. I live surrounded by water on an island. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I see it every day. Yeah. Uh, if I go for a walk, I'm always oh, oh you yeah. know, and it's not just landscapes. Um, it's not just nightscapes. It's not just sunsets. Sometimes I'll just see mushrooms growing and I'm like, oh, yeah. that's very cool. Yeah. So, you know, I'll be inspired to take pictures and that's it. It's, I'm surrounded by it all, all the time. And, uh, and when I travel, I'm looking for those things. Um, another thing that I really, that really interests me is history and, uh, abandoned things. Mm. So, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a bridge, it doesn't matter if it's an old barn, I will stop and make a detour You love that <laughs> to go, to go in and see it. Uh, and that's, um, that part of the show actually 
One, two components are the Giesler Boatworks, which is the Giesler's uh, original. All that uh, work is from their original uh, warehouse in Powassan, which was about to be removed. And we were able to go there for a couple of days and take photographs. So that there are a couple of those images on that display. And then the other thing is a new project that I'm doing. It's called Train Lore. And I'm visiting all the abandoned, soon to be abandoned, and actually ones that are still in full function, train, train stations from, um, uh, I'm going to say Perry Sound to Cochrane. Cool. And I have a couple of those on display. I have the, the Mattawa is one of them, yeah. Tomogamy is one of them, and the Cobalt. Two really, those are amazing buildings themselves. So, so that's, that's part of what I look to. Just not just nature, but yeah. what happens in nature. And you know, one of the images on display um, is a car that's in a babaka, and nature has taken it over. I mean, yeah. the colors, it just blended in. Yeah. You know, even though it's metal, it's, it's, it's become part of nature. Isn't that cool? Babaka is a really special place. It is a very cool place. Yeah. What's definitely. the name of the rock that stands out? Spirit Rock? Is that Spirit right? Rock. Yes. On yeah. Um, uh, yeah. There's a small lake that, and there used to be two of those. Yeah. And now there's one. And then there are a couple other spots on uh, Babaka, which Alex showed me. Um, I'm not going to reveal them because he asked me not to. He says yeah. I don't show very many people, but I know yeah. you all my life, so I'm going to show you yeah. these things. So they were they were pretty cool very and very cool. similar to the Standing Rock. Very idea. cool. Yeah. Very is. cool. There's so much about our history here in Ontario that um, we need to learn about. Yes. And, you know, the train stations are, I look at the Mattawa station, I go to Ottawa quite often and I drive by and I think it's not going to be there much longer. Yeah. It's all wood. Yeah. You know, the roof is already in rough shape. It's been broken into a number of times, been vandalized. And yeah. I, I see the route that happens with those buildings eventually they're going to either collapse or the vandals will, there'll be a fire and yeah. that'll be gone and, and that'll be it. And just the architecture of those buildings was, was quite unique. It's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, if people want to learn more about your art, find you, see what you're up to, where do they find you? Uh, I have a, a, a website on photo shelter. So just look for a good run on photo shelter, social media. I'm on Facebook. Um, my Facebook page is virtually my art. Yeah. Uh, I'm on Instagram, the same thing, Gooderum Photography. Just look that up. And I don't really do much other social media than those things. Yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, you know, I'm, and I can be found in Tomogamy. That's great. Well, I'm thanks. also at the Tomogamy yeah. train station. We have a gallery there called Living Tomogamy Art and Culture. And, uh, there's a number of artists that are on display there. So you can see my work right there. Great Saturdays, uh, they have, uh, a market. And the train station's open, so it's also a great way to, to go and see some local art and my work. Yeah, beautiful. Well, I really appreciate you coming in the studio and doing this together. I, I love bringing a little attention to the artistry going on around town. And obviously, you come from a unique perspective, and it reveals itself in what you share. Thank you. And I, I really appreciate it. And if anybody is interested in is in North Bay and wants to come see the show until September, they have a chance to come here at 176 Lakeshore. If you're in Tomogamy, if you haven't been to Tomogamy, you got to go check that out. It's an incredible place. I love it there. It is. And there's Definitely. a fire tower to climb, even yeah. if you're not able to get on the lake. I mean, there's stuff to do. Well, there's there. the, the White Bear Forest is there as well, yeah. where the tower is. So that's a really lovely walk and yeah. uh, it's very accessible. Yeah. Uh, you don't need a boat and you don't need to, uh, you know, to, to, to do much to go to see both of those things. I also do tours. If people are interested. Oh, yeah? I'll do the old growth tours on Tomogamy Island. And uh, so cool. I'll take you there by boat and I'll walk you around. And um, sometimes I'll just take people for a boat tour around that island afterwards. It's the biggest island on Lake Tomogamy. Yeah. And that's where the Copperfield Mine was. Interesting. Which is now closed and abandoned. Uh, yeah. And there's nothing there. It's completely, yeah. pretty much restored yeah. to, to nature. Uh, used to be lots of things there that were Wild. very cool. Wild. Well, again, thanks for coming in. It's really well, fun you, to Richard. have you. And I'm just really thrilled that you're, uh, keep working. Thank you. Keep doing I, it. I intend to. What would you tell a young guy or girl who's dabbling in photography and who's maybe like thinking of picking up a camera again? What would your advice be as somebody who's gone back and forth? Don't worry about your equipment. Don't overbuy your equipment. Equipment is important. And the more you're into photography, it's more important to find equipment that really works well for you. Even the phone, 
even yeah. this has a great camera in it. Yeah. I would never get rid of my camera for this, but I still use this. But if you have a camera, um, I would buy something that has adjustable, the removable lenses. And then I would say you need to just practice. There's yeah. lots and lots of practice, practice options practice. out there to learn and learn the basics and understand the basics. And, you know, I do portraits as well as landscapes. I use studio lighting, which I all learned. James Forsyth started me. I never want to take pictures of people. And he started us with doing some portraiture. And I fell in love with it after that and learned how you to use lighting. You just have to try sometimes. You just have to try. Uh, but uh, don't be afraid, you know. I mean, and don't be afraid if it's not in focus. If it's not dead sharp. It doesn't matter. It's what you see with your eyes. Mm. And that's why you need to develop your art. I love that. That's a great way to send it off. Thank you. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, just do it. Be fearless. No fear. Be fearless. Here we go. Jerry, thanks for coming in. Hey, man. Everybody. Thank you. Check out Jerry's channels on the socials and through the website. Thanks for checking us out. Subscribe, like, comment, share, send me a message. Can't wait to uh, hear from you and talk to you soon. Thanks for coming out.